Let's bow our heads for prayer. John 10, 10. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Father, we know that the devil is present everywhere. Everywhere. And we praise your name that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And you come to give us a rich, satisfying life. We ask for your victory to be here today. That as I speak, it's you speaking. That what I say is the Holy Spirit, uh, what the, you want to be said. Lord, open our hearts to hear your message. And let us remember the tremendous amount of blessing that you have given us in this country. We pray, and also we thank you for the military. Lord, we take it for granted so, so much. But thank you so much for those who gave their lives in the past, who are willing to give their lives now, and who are going to give their lives in the future, Lord, for us and our freedom. We pray for them, we pray for safety, we pray for protection, we pray that they would be blessed as they bless us. In your son, Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. 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 Is God not awesome? Is God not awesome? I mean, where we live, where you and I reside, it, it's the greatest in the world. And that that's not a debate. That's not a, a an opinion. It's a fact the way we have been blessed in this nation. We can do whatever we want to do, whatever we want to do, because we want to do it. Okay. Uh, I have my sister and brother-in-law in town. They got up, left Phoenix, and came to El Paso. They didn't have to get a, a passport, they didn't have to get a visa, they didn't have to get papers of any kind. They got up and they left. We drove, uh, my two sons and I, whether it was uh, good or not, we drove our motorcycles from here to Florida. Yes, we paid for it, but it, we didn't have to do anything special. It was our free will, our free choice to do it in this country. And you know what? There was gas stations all over the place to fill up our motorcycles. We didn't need a special card. We didn't need special permission. There was restaurants all over the place, and we took advantage of those. And it, you know, we live in a perfect, almost a perfect country. Because, this is opinion, because this country was started for God. Because this country put God first. That's why we have the country we have. I feel a little embarrassed being up here because I didn't serve in the military. Okay? I had my chance and I didn't. Okay? But I love this country and I'm very thankful, very thankful for those of you that did serve in the military. Okay? I know it's a movie and Hollywood takes uh, privileges that they shouldn't, but I watched The Patriot and it reminds me what they did. They stood up against an already formed country to form ours. They didn't have army training. They didn't have military training. They didn't have anything. But they stood up and knew that we were not being done right. And they said, we need to be our own country. And they came and they stood and they fought for us. And because they fought for us, we are here. We are here able to do what we are able to do. So at this moment, I would like to salute the people of the armed forces. And we're going to play a song. And when your song of the branch of service that you were in played, please stand up. And if uh, Ms. Vanna White, I mean my wife, if you'll come up <laughs> and, and you will show them that what we've got, please. For those of you in the military, we, we bought some gifts, and for your choice, uh, come up and get one. It, it's just a small thank you, a very small thank you, but when your song plays, please feel free to come up and take one. If you want to wait till the end of the service, that's up to you. If you want to tell William, William, go get me the flag or this, tell William to go get you this. This is just a small 
token of our appreciation. Very strong. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez.
There was joy. And yes, we have it, we've had our problems. We always will because the devil is here. He owns this earth. This is his to try to destroy our hearts, our minds, our lives. But because those in charge turn to God, we've had the victory through God. Because George Washington believed in God. Because our forefathers believed in God. And whether they were Christians or not, they knew there was a God. Thomas Jefferson, as I've read and studied and heard, he wasn't a Christian. But he knew about God. And he put God first. And it's just so amazing to me, it's so amazing to me, the intelligence of these forefathers of ours. The Declaration of Independence. It was written. It was written within a matter of days, if not hours. It was written. And everything that it talks about, I'm going to read to you, excuse me, the, just the very, very beginning of it. It says, the unan in Congress, July 4, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To have the, the love for God and the wisdom to write this, so that if you look at the Declaration of Independence, 56 people signed it, which means they had to agree with it. Imagine 56 people agreeing on one thing. Okay, you know, try to try to picture that right there. But they did. They were all in agreement. And they had the word creator. They had the word God. They used it. And they weren't embarrassed. They weren't shy. They weren't all oh, separation of state and, and, and government and religion. And that never came up. They knew where to turn. They knew who to look to. They knew how this was going to work and why this was going to work. It was God. Then, the Constitution of the United States, which we call the Bill of Rights and all amendments, the preamble. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. I, I, I just, how many of you have seen the movie? Oh my goodness, it just hit my mind. The one with Nicholas Cage and he's looking. Uh, National Treasure. Okay, if you have a chance, watch the movie National Treasure. And, and there's a, a statement in there that as he's reading and, and talking about the history, he says, oh, if only we could talk like that again. Only a man still talk like that. I mean, it's just a love that they had for the nation and a love that they had for God. That's why our nation is how our nation is. Now, the Gettysburg Address. It was during the Civil War, and that was a war within our country. It was a sad time in our history, but they were fighting for what they believed. And, and still the ones in charge believed in God. And they had this strong belief in God that they were doing right. But this ad address is, is one of the, if not the most famous, one of the most famous speeches ever given by a president. And this is how short it is. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. 
We are men on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember that we say what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is, for, it is rather for us to increase, to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we are here highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln, November 19, 1863. That these honored dead we take uh, here, highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. What are we doing now in the United States? I'll, instead of going that route, let's go this route. What are you and I doing now for the United States? For those dead that, that died for us? Are we allowing their death to be in vain? Or are we going to stand up for God? As they did. When Abraham Lincoln mentioned God, nobody walked away. Nobody yelled, hey, that's the, you're the president. The separation of government and religion. Nobody did that. What are we doing today with what's going on in our nation? Where are you? And if you think about this, if you think about this, one person started Planned Parenthood. One person decided to take a stand against prayer in school. One person took a stand on abortion. We are more than one person. We can back each other up. We can take that stand to say, you know what? Let's do, let's go back to God. Let's put God first. Let's be here for each other. When one of our brothers or sisters is saying, you know what, I'm going to go speak at this place, let's pray for them, number one, of course, and then let's go with them if we can. I know we got jobs during the day. I know we got things to do. But if we're able to, let's go. Let's go to these political parties and take a stand for God. Not for Republicans, not for Democrats, not for Libertarians, but for God. And let's say, you know, what are we doing to ensure that we have the freedom of religion? What are we doing? It's, it's endangered. I don't know if you've watched the movie God's Not Dead 2, but at the very end, if you stay a little bit into the credits, there's a section there that is scary. I don't want to tell you, but because if you haven't seen the movie, I don't want to ruin it for you. But it's happening, people. We are being endangered of being able to speak for God, to speak about God. Let's don't let that happen. Let's don't let their death be in vain. Look at how God has blessed the United States of America. We became the richest nation in the world. We had the Industrial Revolution. We have an abundance of natural resources. We become the most powerful nation in the world. We have the strongest military force in the world. The only thing I would question is, is the Jewish nation. Uh, they, they, God just takes wow. Okay? We became known as the land of opportunity. Everybody in the world wanted to come to us. We eventually had to close our borders because so many were coming to the land of opportunity. And look at how many uh, foreigners own businesses here in the United States. 
Okay? Because God has blessed us. Because we put Him first. We always thought about Him. So I, this message, I hope, is a message of encouragement to you. Not an encouragement of embarrassment. Not, an, not a sermon of embarrassment. Not a sermon of, oh, He really let us have it. I, I don't want that. I don't get that out of it. Get it out of encouragement. You can go home and drive in your car and you can put on the Christian station. You can put it on Christian music. You can put it on pop music. You can put it on this music. You have that freedom because we put God first. But do understand, it, they're trying to take that away from us. They're trying to say we can't have Christian radio. They're trying to say we can't have Christian TV. It has to be monitored. It has to be... Um, there's another word that has been lost. Censored, thank you very much. It has to be censored. Let's don't let that happen. Let's don't <coughs> let those who died for the, our freedom have died in vain. The other side will tell you, well, they died so that we have the freedom to not do these things. They turn it and they twist it and some can even make it sound sensible. But that's not God. Uh, I, I, the verse that just came to my mind is, they will, um, what's wrong will seem right, will be lived as right. That's what's happening. We can take a stand. You and I can take a stand. As, as we come together, we can pray for our nation. We can go home and pray for those that, that are in charge. And then we can ask the Lord, help me to live for you today regardless of what happens. Last week it was, I used Paul as the, as the example. My goodness what he went through for God. But he was happy. He was joyful. He sang praises in jail. He talked to God as he was being stoned. He talked to God as he was being beaten up. And he loved those people that did those things to him. And he tried to win them over to the Lord. Oh, we could do that. If we will start, there has to be a starting point. Just start. And if you get put down, so what? So what? Count it all joy when you're put down and, and insulted for my name's sake. That's true. That's true. Believe that. Count it as joy. That means I stood up for the Lord today. That means I, I did what He wanted me to do. And yeah, I got beaten up, but all right. He told me I was. Now I'll go home, take my shower, eat my supper, go to sleep, and be ready for the next day. That's what Paul did. That's what Peter did. That's what the apostles did. And we need to follow those examples. Let's not give in. We give in by not doing anything. I know, I know that this, this year is going to be super hard to vote. It's super hard to vote for who we have to vote for. But through prayer, do we not believe that God can change either one of their hearts? Do we not believe that if we pray day and night for them, that one of them can give their hearts to, to Him? That we have to believe that. And we need to pray for our leaders. So in doing that, it might change them. Or as we pray for our, our senators, it might change them, and they might take the stand needed. So we got to believe. We need to take that stand for God because of the nation that He's given us, the blessings that we have received because He, we put Him first. I'm going to end with this verse. And in your bulletin it says, scary. And this is the way it hit me as I read it. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. According as we hope in thee. That's the part that scares me. Okay? Because uh, we want his mercy on us, but do we hope in him? Is our country hoping in him? So if it's according to how we hope in him, right now it, it appears to me that we're losing. So, how should we expect His mercy? Are we fighting back? 
Are we fighting back in our own little space of life, at our jobs, at, at, at our, uh, wherever we go? Let's fight back so that it be according to the hope that we have, the hope that we know we can win God back in this nation, and then he'll have greater mercy because our hope is in him. Okay, we're going to end with a song um, and the musicians will come up. And we have some uh, gifts left over. If any of you know of, a, of a, another third person and you want to take one, please feel free to take one. All right, well, thank you all very much for coming. Let's bow our heads in prayer, and in the end of prayer, we wish you a happy, happy 4th of July and a safe one. Father, we thank you so much for your word, and Lord, I pray that that's what they heard was your word. And what I made mistakes, Lord, is that the Holy Spirit show and reveal to them the truth. Uh, Lord, keep us safe this weekend. It's a very, very celebrated weekend, and some celebrate more than they should. So keep us safe on the road. In your Son, Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.